Gary's just explained to you the beauty of glass and how it performs well thermally as well as aesthetically. Let's have a look now at how the whole window system can be uh, designed and what thermal improvements can be administered to facade systems. This slide shows a matrix of general facade thermal improvement or acoustic improvement qualities. The single glazed options obviously don't perform as well as the double glazed options because the glass performance is not as good. When you're looking at framing systems, the aim of reducing the amount of aluminium exposed on the outside of the glass is a benefit in improving the thermal performance of the facade system. Why does removing the amount of aluminium outside the glass help us with the performance of the facade, Gary? Because we're measuring heat loss with UV, so the less frame you have on the outside, the less pathway you have to the outside. And that's when we're considering it in the um, NRFC. In, in RF, NFRC, NFRC, National Fenestration Rating Council, Environmental Conditions. But in reality, our environmental conditions are much different to that. Yes, we have quite a mild environment here compared to, say, Northern America, don't we? Correct, yes. We do not have a significant uh, dynamic range or temperature difference between our daytime and nighttime on winter and summer conditions. So, for example, a thermally broken facade system where the external aluminium is isolated from the internal aluminium by non-conducting elements, non-thermally conducting elements, is that sort of facade system appropriate here in Australia? I don't believe it's appropriate, no, because I don't think, as I said, I don't think we have the temperature differences to justify it. Yeah, so from an economic dollar for dollar measure, the thermally broken system is probably overpriced for our Cor climatic correct. conditions in Australia. You can achieve reasonable performance with a structurally glazed system. So beside improving the glass and the framing options, let's explore further how we can improve the energy efficiency of the overall facade system. Some options that can be employed are sun shading devices, motorised external Venetian blinds, double skin facades are being employed to improve the, uh, the thermal properties of a building. Very European. Yeah, we'll talk about that soon. And natural ventilation is another option that's available to try to reduce the amount of energy that a building uses and improve its thermal performance. When considering sun shading devices, just a few things to keep in mind are that sunshades act similar to spinnakers on yachts. They catch a lot of wind and apply large loads to the, uh, the structure that supports them off the facade. So rather than using singular large projections of sunshading elements, it will be more efficient to use multiple smaller elements. Uh, Penetrations of the facade, uh, sorry, penetrations of the sunshade through the facade are always a water penetration risk to a, a facade. The best way to mitigate that is to make sure that the sunshades are always attached to the outside elements of the facade, which are outside of that pressure equalised cavity we spoke about. So you're not creating a weak spot. Correct. So in order to achieve those small connections to the outside of the facade, again, small projections of the sunshades are advantageous. Other things that need to be considered with sunshades are how they're fabricated in the factory and how they're economically handled and transported to site. For safety reasons, it's always a benefit to install the sunshade elements onto the glazing element on the floor of the building construction site and then launch it out of the side of the building to save people having to work at height on the outside of the building and the yes. risks associated with that. Makes sense. And lastly, keeping sunshades fairly light is also a benefit. Let's have a look at some different sunshade types. Horizontal sunshades are one type of shading device employed. Vertical sun blades can also be employed on a building. Jim, what, uh, in what application of what elevation should you use a vertical sunshade versus a horizontal sunshade? If we look at it logically, a sunshade over your head in a horizontal situation is designed to minimise the amount of sunlight 
being transpired by overhead sun condition or location. And vertical sunshades, oh that's much better, don't see your ugly face anymore. Mm -hmm. That provides benefit for near horizontal sun locations. So for example in the east and the west situations, vertical sunshades provide the best shading to a structure. For the northerly sun location in the middle of the day, sunshades are good overhead. overhead. Sometimes buildings require such intense shading that you need to employ both horizontal and vertical shading to achieve complete sun shading of the building. Screen elements used as sunshades are also fantastic devices for improving the daylighting in a building. Perforated aluminium screens are employed on some buildings both architecturally to create massing of the building, but also when viewed from the inside, it's amazing how clear the vision through is it's basically a solid aluminium sheet with 50% perforations. Sun shading devices are typically designed using three-dimensional modelling, creating a, a sun path model for the building. So the sun shades are designed for the sun rising in the east with typically vertical sun shades to block the low horizon level sun. Horizontal sun shades on the north elevation to minimise the amount of sunlight in that vertical situation of the glass, of the, the sun. And again, vertically aligned shades to the western elevation to prevent that low horizontal uh, sun from the, the setting sun. Obviously on the south side of the building there's minimal sunlight that happens in our part of the world to the, that side of the building, so any shading device on the southern side of the building is more decorative than more decorative than more construction. Sun shades can be used to stunning effect. Here's a few examples. Brisbane Central had an amazing effect with the sun shades employed on that building. m and in the valley. And this building, South Australian Health and Medical Research Institute. Quite a simple sun shade with a striking effect to the building. Another method to improve the energy efficiency of building is to employ external Venetian blinds. These external Venetian blinds can control complete sun lockout to a building. It doesn't work as um, internal Venetian blinds or internal blinds and curtains to a building. It doesn't work as well as the external blinds, does it, Gary? No, it doesn't, because the heat is already inside the building. That's right. The big problem with external Venetian blinds is that they're outside of the sun and subject to wind loads. Because they're only supported by very thin tensile stainless steel members, they deflect substantially under wind load. To prevent those external lines from crashing into the glass and damaging the facade, these external lines have to retract under a certain wind speed. So one of the problems with external Venetian blinds is that you still have to design the electrical and mechanical plant for a building to be able to cater for those days when it's a very hot conditions and it's windy and the blinds have to be retracted. So a way to improve on that is to put the blind inside an external skin of the facade. Double skin facades employ that method whereby the Venetian blind is encompassed between an external wind-breaking facade and an internal functional facade of building with a resistant facade. Y Street in Sydney is one of several buildings in Australia that employ this double skin facade technique and it uses that volume of air between the external and the internal facade basically as a blanket, a thermal insulator, a thermos as such. How effective these double skin facades are in our environment where we have fairly mild conditions and the internal and external temperatures aren't particularly great well, the, the difference between the internal and the external temperatures aren't particularly great. It makes the thought of spending all that money on a double skin facade questionable, doesn't it? Yes, it does. There was a paper that was presented by an architect over in the States just recently that uh, reviewed different types of climate conditions with double skin facades and the return period required to pay off 
that facade in the energy savings of the building achieved. In our type of mild environment, that particular study determined that it would be somewhere in the order of 90 years Not cost effective. occupancy before you could pay off the cost of that initial cost of the, the second facade skin of the building. So the applicability and the suitability of double skin facades here in Australia is still questionable. Correct. Operable facades and natural ventilation provide fantastic opportunities for energy savings in a building. Everybody likes to open up a building and get fresh air rather than being stuck inside a, uh, a very sanitary environment, aren't they? Very true, and I don't think it, I don't think many uh, architects take advantage of this. One of the big problems though in commercial buildings is the limitations of a ventilated facade system. If you open up a facade system for natural ventilation, you've lost your acoustic properties of the facade. <laughs> The wind that might blow in through the facade in an office environment could blow the plans around and be uh, quite impractical for many situations. An operable facade system also has a lot of air leaks. So even though you're saving energy in using natural ventilation on the days when you can, when those operable facade systems are closed, they leak quite a lot of air. So you're losing a lot of energy out of your air conditioned environment. So there's a a way of consideration that needs to be taken into place and an evaluation to find out whether an operable facade system is applicable for the building use that you have in mind. There are, however, some fantastic operable glazing systems. Uh, Schneider louvers out of Germany have a particular product, the MP2 louver, which is a frameless double glazed louver which has unbelievable air tightness water penetration resistance. If your client has the money to spend on a product like that, that'll be an ideal solution for a job. Sure. That concludes our series of videos. Hope we haven't put you all to sleep, and we look forward to seeing you all in the, video, in the, uh, the lecture coming soon. Thank you.